It's time for another episode of Tucson Means Business, featuring Tucson's top entrepreneurs and leaders in the business world. And now your host, Mark Bishop. Welcome to another Tucson Means Business with Mark Bishop, proudly brought to us by the 49ers Golf and Country Club, which, by the way, this week is... uh, uh, opening up a little, it has been just, you know, pick up and take away with everything closed, including the gymnasium and pool and everything else. But um, they are actually opening up this weekend. And uh, apparently there's all sorts of uh, uh, separations going involved, going on to be able to do it. So you can ring up, check it out yourself. But uh, they are open for business. All right. That's the 49ers Golf and Country Club and, of course, the Rincon Mountain Grill. But right now, of course, business uh, isn't usual. Thousands of Arizonans are at a loss. They're wondering if uh, they'll have jobs to go back to or if their industry will even be the same. Meanwhile, there's unprecedented need for help in the healthcare, supporting those on the front lines, as well as industry-spanning logistics roles, racing to keep up with the population in distress. So, in unprecedented times, there's a call for unprecedented measures. And that's why Partnership for Economic Innovation is embracing the challenge of putting a scalable systems-level solution and addressing Arizona's workforce crisis to the test. My special guest for this episode is Mary Foote, who serves as Director for the Partnership for Economic Innovation, the parent organization of Pipeline AZ. Welcome, Mary. Thank you for having me. Well, here we are. You're up there in uh, beautiful Scottsdale and that end of town and me here in Tucson and you're going all over the world. How about that? (laughs) We're going to find out what it's all about. What is Pipeline AZ? So Pipeline AZ is a platform. Uh, We connect job seekers uh, to employers based upon a proprietary skills algorithm. So um, while most uh, job boards are using uh, keyword searches, uh, we try to align people based upon the skills employers are looking for um, with the skills that uh, qualified job seekers have. We also uh, provide access to fast track training, Uh, opportunities for job seekers as well, uh, and generally work with the community partners and different organizations and case management uh, organizations as well to build talent pipelines to serve the industries that uh, are in and prominent in Arizona. Well, you're well suited for this role. I believe, Mary, that you've been in economic development for more than, what, 10 years now, uh, focusing on tax incentives, business attraction and retention, innovation, ecosystems, and workforce development. Now, uh, you're actively involved in your community through board participation and volunteering, but you also oversee Valley's leaderships, jobs, and economy initiatives. Is that right? That is correct. Um, Valley Leadership is a longtime uh, leadership program institution uh, that sits within um, the greater Phoenix region but extends across the state as well. Uh, And they've been actively working on solutions uh, in coordination with the governor's office uh, to help add resources to the Arizona Together site, uh, which is really the the one spot pool of resources uh, that any citizen would need uh, during this time. You've only just launched uh, the now hiring C19AZ, right? That's a crisis response hub powered by uh, your existing pipeline AZ platform where uh, the partnerships and technology needed to help redirect a population at scale are already in place and they're equipped to handle the, uh, the coming influx of job seekers. Tell us a little bit more about that if you can. We, our traditional platform that was really focused on building talent pipelines, uh, providing career exploration opportunities, and trying to get people on a path toward jobs that we know are going to be prominent in the next 20, 30 years. What we've done with the C19AZ page is we've made the effort to really start focusing on jobs that we know are available right now. Um, Certainly, many of those are in retail and logistics, uh, but we do also have quite a bit in the contact center space, uh, manufacturing, construction, uh, healthcare as well. Uh, So we wanted to more prominently feature 
those jobs. And we also wanted to highlight training beyond traditional four-year degrees uh, to the stackable credentials, uh, certifications that we completed online at home within two to 12 weeks. Okay, let me ask you this. What, what is Pipeline AZ doing for Tucson right now? So we partner closely and have historically with the Tucson Metro Chamber. Um, they've long been supporters of Pipeline as a, a place for employers and job seekers in the Tucson Metro area to connect. Um, we have many employers in the Tucson area um, that are hiring and um, have been on the platform and posting jobs Companies like Bombardier, Excel Mechanical, um, Asarco, and, and some other organizations um, have been participants on the platform and have used it to find job seekers in the Tucson area specifically. Okay, so you obviously contact these companies, and uh, because, you know, on the face of it, Mary, uh, I've, I've been dealing in a different way with different businesses this week, and, and it's been pretty down. I mean, the smaller businesses just don't exist per se you know they think they're not in business anymore and they're waiting to see which way things go needless to say restaurants are out of the game uh, a, a lot of other smaller businesses but you're talking these bigger companies now are, are they along the technical lines or engineering lines is, is that where the jobs are there are certainly some jobs um still manufacturing um positions as well the aerospace and defense industry excuse me, still seems to be relatively strong in terms of hiring. We haven't seen too much of a dip in that area. They still have their contracts and, and need to create machinery and parts and equipment. Um, additionally, with some contracting and construction, uh, we're still seeing strong hiring. And again, those uh, some of the larger retail, um, pharmacies, grocery stores, of course, are also hiring. Um, generally, you know, we have been hearing from businesses and you're absolutely right. A lot of the, the smaller companies and restaurants and hospitality have been really struggling. Even those that are trying to stay open and survive, um, are having a difficult time retaining, uh, employees because of the enhanced unemployment benefits. A lot of employees are, are preferring to stay furloughed or unemployed. And so we are working on solutions to incentivize those employees to, to come back to work and um, help them identify opportunities to upskill or reskill during this time uh, while continuing to serve as an essential workforce. You'd have pretty much have your finger right on the pulse, wouldn't you? You know what's going on. Uh, is, it, is it a lot uh, easier for you in Phoenix? You know, a population of, what, five-odd million there now, mm -hmm. uh, very productive city, um, compared to us as a regional center, uh, is it a lot more open for you in Phoenix? I don't know that it's a lot more open. Um, you know, anecdotally, it seems that uh, Phoenicians are maybe more willing to to reopen some operations more quickly. Um, you know, the, we're, we're not taking a, a standpoint of whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, we certainly have strived to, to diversify our economy in the greater Phoenix region, uh, but Tucson's also uh, made great strides. Uh, the chamber um, has done a lot of work in that area as well. So I don't know that we have an advantage based upon population or economic diversity. Um, Tucson is, has really grown as a city um, and really leveraged the university system uh, to create a unique kind of industry ecosystem um, down there. So so I don't know that we have an advantage up in our area. What about virtual hiring? What, what, what is a virtual hiring event? How does it work? It, traditionally, we would do uh, in-person hiring events. So people would come onto the platform, both job seekers and employers. Employers would complete ideal candidate profiles, um, and then job seekers would be matched to a career coach who would help them complete their profiles. They would match in advance of the, uh, of the event and then be able to have interviews that day. Now, uh, we don't have the ability to meet in person. And even though some things are being lifted, we're hearing from employers that they're still not prepared to do in-person hiring events. They still feel more comfortable in a virtual environment to connect to job seekers. Mm. So what we've done is now open up these hiring events to uh, take place over um, weeks or even a month at a time. 
And as soon as job seekers match to employers, um, they're able to apply right then and there, and the employer is able to see their matches and reach out and uh, contact them for interviews without having to wait until an actual event date. Um, we've seen that to be very popular. Um, in some ways, they've even started to prefer it to in-person uh, hiring events because mm. they are able to to get access to those job seekers who are qualified right away without having to wait until the day of a job fair. Mm. So it doesn't matter if the guy's sitting there uh, without any pants on, as long as he's got his tie and shirt, right? <laughs> we highly, we highly encourage pants. Um, What's the bit? Of, Go on. A couple of reasons you don't want to get up in the middle of a call. <laughs> middle of an interview. Some no. bad, some bad prints. Um, also, it just really makes you feel more professional. Pants do provide an extra level of confidence, we find, for interviews. <laughs> I just wondered, today, is it uh, still, uh, you know, tie and shirt, or is it very much this open look, you know, the business uh, top, maybe a top of a suit, but uh, open neck shirt? What, what's the in thing today? I mean, I can't, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a tie in the last six weeks. I, there you go. I don't think they exist <laughs> anymore. I mean, for an interview, you can certainly ask the employer um, dress preference. I don't think you're going to get docked for not wearing a tie, but I certainly wouldn't wear a t-shirt and, and definitely don't try to wear anything with holes in it. Make sure that, you know, make sure that it's all cleaned up. There you go. Virtual hiring is what we're touching on here. The benefit, the benefit to job seekers is what do you think? I mean, I think the benefits to job seekers are they're still able to research the employers. Um, employers registered on the site have company pages, um, Job seekers can research the company there as well as the company's website, but it'll give information about the benefits provided by the company, the, the overall culture. They can also peruse um, jobs, you know, from many different places. Um, in addition to finding job opportunities and fast track training opportunities, we do also have career exploration resources. So people are able to take a skills assessment and get a better understanding of, um, you know, what might be a good fit for them, not just from their current level of skills, but also uh, what might be more fulfilling to them in the future as they work in a temporary position that, that may not be a good fit for them right now. Mm, that's a good thing. They're not, uh, then they're not, you know, the, what is, what is the saying? A square peg in a round hole. They're not just uh, yes. labeled as that per se, you know, it opens it up for them. That's good. Um, what I want to ask you is this, the, the, how are you getting employers to sign up for this service in the first place? Well, we, uh, we work through channel partners. Certainly we have our own employer relationships. Um, in the Phoenix area, we work very closely with Maricopa County at work and city economic development agencies. Um, we have quite a number of employers in the Tucson area um, because of our relationship with the Tucson Metro Chamber. Um, they're very well connected um, to all of the companies in their region. Um, they've done a lot of work in identifying those that are still hiring, understanding the types of positions um, that they're still hiring for. And, and in fact, we're in discussions with the Metro Chamber in Tucson right now, um, looking to do a virtual hiring event with them um, probably sometime early June. Mm. Yeah, they do work, you know, from the president down, Amber and Michael and so on, the whole team work really well. They uh, have a, a couple of shows on, on my channel, and I'm a member of the chamber. And, and I'm very impressed at the way they do work hard with the uh, companies in town to help them from many different angles. That would be a great event from what you're talking there, talking about that virtual. What happens if, um, let's say you don't walk away with a job, during the event what happens then so if you don't find a job you will stay on the platform so if it doesn't happen during that particular time period as long as you keep your profile active um we'll still match you to jobs that may be available um and may be a good fit for you um additionally we do have um you know the ability to explore different career options and understand the certifications um, that are available online to help explore those. 
Um, so Tucson Metro has done a great job in terms of their partnership with the university systems and also uh, the community colleges in the Tucson area uh, to ensure that you know we have access to their training options as well. Um, they also work closely with uh, different organizations like the One Stop Shop in Tucson, um, the Chicanas por la Casa uh, organization down there, which represents a lot of different job seekers. Um, so we make sure that, you know, if they're tied into any of those agencies, they're able to access those resources as well. I'm speaking with Mary Foote from uh, Phoenix in Arizona. She is the Director of the Partnership for Economic Innovation and Pipeline. And, uh, of course, it affects Tucson as well. It's all about jobs, what we've got going in the future, and how we're going to get them and how they're going to be displayed. And it's like a whole new start when we come back. Uh, the show, of course, is brought to us uh, by the 49ers Golf and Country Club, and we'll be right back after this message. Lisa DeFalco is the Director of Fitness and Events at the beautiful 49ers Golf and Country Club. And don't forget, it's open to the public. And you may not want to play golf. You may not even want to go to the restaurant for a bite to eat, whether it be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Maybe you're a fitness person. Boy, is there a lot at the club. Lisa, you, you have so much that the club can offer somebody. Well, yes, we do. And we have a lot of things going on in the fitness center for all ages. We offer different kinds of classes from Les Mills Body Pump to yoga. We even have boxing now. We wow. Have, I know. We've got some boxing. <laughs> we also have ballroom dancing for adults. We have lots of different kinds really? of dance Really? Ballroom classes dancing, for too. This goes oh. on during the day, right? Yes, In the beautiful the big new fitness center there at the yes, club. Yes, it is a beautiful fitness center. Wow. And we have lots of other um, activities for for families who aren't really a member, you don't have to be a member to be a part of some of these programs. We work a lot with the school district, Tinkerver to Youth Programs, buses the kids from school to the club to do golf lessons, fitness classes, swimming. The junior high kids get to come on over and do some body pump. It's wow. really amazing. Isn't that a great thing? So they bus the kids there, and they must have a ball. <laughs> I can oh. imagine the s- smiles on their faces. They're so adorable. We just love the kids. They have so much fun. It's a blast. So there's plenty to do, and with summer coming up, of course, there's aerobics, isn't there, in the pool? Yes, we have water aerobics in the pool, and uh, we get a lot of people in for that. That's a really popular class. It'll change a little bit over the summer because we have a huge swim team. A lot of fun stuff with the swim team going on. And we also have junior recreation camps over the summer. A lot of things to do for the kids. And it's mostly all day. We work with Tucson Twisteds. They come out and do some clinics. Uh, 72 Aquatics comes out, brings out their scuba equipment, and the kids get to go scuba diving in the pool, which is pretty cool. Anybody listening can phone you on what or contact you directly? How do they do that? They go ahead and call. They can call the club at 749-4925, extension 211, or you can send us an email. Check it out on the website at 49ersCC.com. Lisa DeFalco, she is the Director of Fitness and Events at the famous 49ers Golf and Country Club. Okay, Mary, now, uh, this is a great thing that you're doing. You're a not-for-profit, right? Correct. Okay, so I guess... uh, We're funded by... um, Oh, 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 sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, you've not only got the work on one side of it all, helping others to get work and so on, you've got the work yourself of, of being funded and uh, getting funds, I mean, that's a job in its own uh, only, you know, realm, isn't it, really? A not-for-profit just doesn't roll out the door. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, I, I wish it did, but unfortunately, that's that's not the case. Tell me this. Are there going to be more of these catering to different types of people whose jobs were impacted by the crisis? Uh, the reason I'm I, I'm keen on what you brought up before in our interview about that is, you know, people have degrees or they have a specific role. They've come out of college or even if they've never been to college, they've spent most of their working life in a specific career. And it takes a massive shift or something to happen usually to push them out of that uh, continuing pipeline, if you like, 
to even look at another career, and it may be something for the better or something they've always wanted to do. I mean, you must see some interesting, you know, looks at that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that there there are good things and bad things, right? I, I mean, I, I speak with our career coaches. So, again, anyone who registers on the platform is um, offered to connect with a career coach who can help them complete their profile but also help them through the career exploration process if they are considering um, a different path of work and, and you know, trying to understand what are the educational opportunities required for that new pathway. Um, You know, for some people are just absolutely beside and beside themselves that, um, you know, they're very concerned about um, their ability to continue on a specific career path, uh, given what's currently happening. Um, But, you know, just as often there are others who, really feel like this is a moment for them to take a step back and evaluate, you know, the skills they've already gained throughout their current career and how those may be transferable um, to something that would give them more fulfillment. And it's, you know, understanding new pathways uh, or just adding some more tools to your, uh, to your toolbox uh, can give someone opportunity for hope and uh, even a bit of excitement during this time to maybe come out of this um, with even a better situation than, than what they had in entering it. I, I think it's going to be very interesting um, along those lines down the track. Uh, there's very talented people out there that both male and female that are going to have to expand the old mind a little bit. And uh, I, I wish them well. It's not easy. It's not an easy time for anybody right now. The longer-term goal for helping job seekers uh, on Pipeline AZ, uh, what do you have in mind for that? So really our our long-term goal at this point is to continue to support different cities and metro regions across the state um, to help them prop up these virtual hiring events, um, connect uh, those we know who are laying off in that population of displaced workers with with hiring employers. But beyond that, we're really focused on trying to identify training opportunities for reskilling, what we call upskilling, um, especially for essential workers. Um, you know, there are a lot of companies who understand that um, having employees, you know, in specific positions, um, that there isn't a lot of opportunity uh, for upward mobility within that company, especially if it's, a, if it's a smaller company, right, or it's a small retail operation um, or restaurant or, or what have you. And, and that career isn't a lifelong career for a lot of people. So we're trying to work more closely with businesses to understand how we can get um, training in the hands of their employees and the essential workers um, to incentivize those employees to continue working uh, and also, you know, help them uh, understand that these employers do care about their professional development during this time. Uh, so that's really our, our focus right now is just trying to uh, understand as many training options uh, that are online um, and understand the availability of those and where the financial resources are for those programs. Have you found, uh, at all, Mary, uh, employers that are prepared to, you know, open the doors to really help and train uh, potential staff? They may not have come with the background that they need. Are they are they open to that idea of of, um, of teaching people that aren't pre programmed, you know, to what they want? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's something we see more and more. Um, and that, you know, changes from industry to industry, but we see that quite a bit in construction um, and manufacturing. Anything that's really considered, you know, the trades, it's very easy to get a simple certification and get into a company and they invest in your professional development from there. Um, there are construction companies right now who will pay people um, not super high wages, but will pay them to sit through training. Uh, with the opportunity to have a job afterwards. Um, so we we see that across the board. Um, certainly technology companies will invest in their employees for um, 
you know, those kinds of positions. We talk a lot about uh, in workforce development about the idea of stackable credentials, right? Getting mm-hmm. something uh, that gives you a certification or gives you an opportunity to come into a certain industry. And then what are all of those credentials you can build on top of the initial uh, certification? And we do see that quite a bit, um, as I said, in manufacturing and construction, things that are considered, you know, of the trades, craftsmen uh, type of positions. Yes, well, ironically, over the last few years, there's been a heck of a shortage of uh, of, of good trades people and manufacturing mm-hmm. and trades, you know. Do you have a... Uh, uh, a specific message to employers out there, Mary? Yeah, I would say if if you are hiring, come on the platform. Um, you can go to c19az.com uh, to learn more, and we can help you post your positions. We really provide white glove service. We'll let you know when you have um, candidate matches. Uh, so really, we're, we're willing to do quite a bit. We are a non Profit, so there is no cost to employers. Uh, it is Arizona focused. Um, we work closely with different organizations like Dress for Success, um, Goodwill, um, other folks that have um, an unemployed job seeking population that might be a good fit for those positions, as well as working with different educational institutions that have graduates. I would also say if you are an employer and you do not have um, currently uh, any positions or if you're laying people off, you know, notify the county, uh, Arizona at work folks, notify your chambers, um, you know, the chambers and especially the Tucson Metro Chambers, an amazing example of a place to identify resources to help your company during this time. Uh, so those would really be my, my messages for those who are hiring and those who may be trying to find assistance and resources. Hmm. Well, Arizona's a big state. There's a lot of uh, lovely cities and towns uh, in our state, and you're working virtually right through the state with everybody that you can to get your message out there, right? Yes, that is correct. Um, I, our initial funding came from Maricopa County, but we have since expanded. Um, primarily, our, our focus is Phoenix and Tucson at this time. We do see ourselves expanding more into northern Arizona, Um, We've been working closely with NAU, especially as we learn more about their training opportunities. Um, They have a fantastic hospitality program uh, up at uh, Northern Arizona University, and and that's still of interest to to folks who may have been working in that industry and have a bit of extra time right now to maybe hone their skills or gain more skills. But predominantly, we are Tucson and Phoenix-focused at this point. Okay, and uh, I want to cover all the uh, addresses now that people can find you, get a hold of you, talk with you. Uh, it's a great thing that you're doing. Uh, now, the first one is obviously the website, www.c19az.com. Now, you've got uh, a LinkedIn URL. Would you like to give these as we go through them? Because everybody, you know, some people just live on LinkedIn. They don't do anything else. Yeah. Others are on Twitter. <laughs> I'm just a happy old soul with good old email and a website address because I find you can read a, an awful lot on a website, you know? Yeah, I mean, I would say that if you uh, if you Google Pipeline, AZ, um, jobs, anything like that, you're, you're going to find us. Um, the main site right now is the c19az.com site, but we can also be found at uh, Pipeline AZ. Dot com as well. Um, you can search for Pipeline AZ on LinkedIn. We do have a presence on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and uh, it's a great place to follow us to learn more about virtual hiring events that are happening, uh, new trainings we're onboarding, uh, when we're hearing about new employers coming onto the platform. Um, it's a good way to kind of keep up on what's happening in employment and workforce right now. Yeah. Darn good thing. And, and it's free, which helps, but it does surprise me that uh, it's also free for all the potential employers, Uh, big company, small, doesn't matter in between. They're not paying you anything to be able to list the jobs that uh, they have going or the people that they need. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, that's that's true. I, I mean, I look at our competitors, um, 
I mean, I, I don't know if I would call them competitors because they're primarily, you know, just job boards. Um, and so it's, it's a bit different. We're really community focused. We're not just about, you know, helping somebody find a job. We're helping them find a career pathway, helping them identify, you know, their future fulfillment and work and where they, where they fit. Um, and, and how do they get there? So it's much more of an overall life cycle um, look at a person's career than it is just whatever the next job may be. Um, so we are funded and we are able to offer it complimentary to employers. Um, and it's because we, we want to show them the value of what we're doing and we want to show them the value of Arizona workforce. You know, there's, there's, we have a lot of talented people in our state. Um, and we want to make sure that employers are aware of them and they're hiring right here in their own backyard. And we have an awful lot of uh, talented people in Tucson too, you know, Mary, and it's always a shame. We lose a lot of people who have to go other places for jobs, for careers. So, you know, to me, this opens mm-hmm. the door for saying, look, uh, okay, you may even have a degree in this particular area, Um how about you just, you know, look at this for a little while and get trained and, and maybe just, you know, take a different path. It does open up another opportunity. And if you did come in late on this, it doesn't matter. You can listen to it as many times as you want. It stays on the channel forever, being a beautiful podcast, although we do go live. The mission of Pipeline AZ is, is to connect job seekers with rewarding careers. This isn't just another, you know, find you a job. It's helping you to connect the dots through career exploration, training programs, uh, internships, and apprenticeships. So it's made possible through collaboration between Arizona Industries and the educators and people like the Tucson Metro Chamber. So right now, Pipeline AZ is working to help you to alleviate the impact of COVID-19 on our state by aggregating real-time immediate job openings. And all you got to do is go and check it out. You know, C19AZ uh, is, is what Mary talked about before as the website, www.c19az.com. And it'll tell you an awful lot more. By the way, how's your pit bull going? <laughs> <laughs> hey? um, I finally broke down and got on my haircut yesterday. My oh. groomer was very good about social distancing. I just popped open the back of my car and let him out. Well, uh, uh, how about that, now. Hayden? Hayden, correct? <laughs> <laughs> nice, Hayden. Absolutely. Good boy. I've always been yeah. scared of pit bulls. You know that. Oh, they're sweet. There's no bad dogs, just bad people. There you go. That's exactly what my wife says. You know, that's funny, <laughs> but uh, they've just got this reputation, whether it's unfair yeah. or not. You know, I mean, uh, but Hayden's a good boy. Good boy. Yes. And he's, I think, like all dogs. Dogs are so happy we're home and cats are incredibly indifferent. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, cats are so independent, aren't they? (laughs) Well, it's been fascinating and I hope you enjoyed today, folks. Uh, Mary Foote is her name and um, she's the director uh, of Partnership for Economic Innovation, right, and Pipeline, AZ. And doing a lot of darn good for everybody. You can also no doubt go onto the Tucson Metro Chamber uh, website and check out the newsletters. There'll be information on that, uh, no doubt, coming as well. And, uh, you know, tell your grandson, your son, maybe a friend you've got, uh, if they're a little bit down at the moment, you know, didn't know where to go, what to do, here's perhaps an opportunity for you. And Mary, thanks a lot. We really appreciate what you're doing and appreciate the time you've given uh, Tucson Means Business today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it and hope to be down in Tucson again soon. Okay. Look us up and we'll have a virtual uh, pina colada, (laughs) however you do that. (laughs) All righty, Mary Foote, thank you. Well, uh, folks, that's it. We'll be back with another show soon, proudly brought to us by the 49ers Golf and Country Club, now open for business, and, uh, of course, the Rincon Mountain Grill. Okay. Tucson means business. You heard it here on Tucson Business Radio X.